One of the things that I saw from one of your lectures is uh, cross-pollination between a, a GMO crop and a non-GMO crop. How much of a, an issue is that? Because once it kind of gets in, like somebody I think once said, it's like taking pee out of a swimming pool. I, mean, it just, <laughs> right? you just, I haven't just, heard of that <laughs> analogy, but I wouldn't want to be hired to do that or to take out the, uh, the genetic pollution in the gene pool. I mean, the thing is, how bad is it? <clears throat> the environmental pollution, the, the self-propagating genetic pollution of the gene pool is irreversible. We can reduce the amount of perc percentage of contamination if we're continually bringing in more non-GMO corn, for example. The amount of GMO corn in the gene pool gets less and less, but it doesn't get to zero. It's there as long as the species exists. The only thing that lasts longer than the self-propagating genetic pollution is extinction. So we are now making irreversible entries into the ecosystem, and the biotech industry wants to genetically engineer all commercial seeds, insects, livestock, pets, trees, shrubs, flowers, uh, algae, bacteria, fungus. They want to replace nature. They want to eliminate the billions of years of evolution, uh, the products of the billions of years of evolution, replace it with designer organisms. And that would be a situation where it would be passed on to all future generations. We would basically have you know, nature 2.0, no, nature 0 point or whatever, it would be a disaster. And so we're really, this, this responsibility has been thrust on all of us to decide, are we going to pass on to all future generations a Monsanto version of nature? And are, or are we going to protect it? And so um, it is, there's nothing that's significantly higher level of concern and alarm unless you're looking at, you know, an all-out nuclear war, it's absolutely the top end of what we need to be focused on because there's no going back.